Hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. Well, the other day I was here at our recording facility where we do all of our recording and people come along and they sit in the audience and they watch and one of my granddaughters was here. Uh, young Willow, she's six years of age. And before, I, before we begin, I, I'm often in my room and uh, getting ready and she wanders into the room. And when she comes in, she's got her two hands together and she calls me Pa and she walks up to me and she said to me, Pa, what do I do with these? And she held her two hands up. And so I put cupped my hands and she just dropped it all into my hands. And what she dropped into my hand was some screws and some nuts and some bolts and, and, and some washers. And, and, and I said, what's this? And she said, I found them on a shelf and I don't know what to do with them. And I said, on a shelf, yeah. And I said, where were they? And she, and she described where it was. But if you come here, uh, there, there is equipment in different places. There's you know, production equipment and lighting equipment and all, all sorts of different things around the place and uh, various things. And so it could have been in any of a number of places she was describing to me. And, and she was so proud of herself because she said, she basically said to me, I'm helping these things were not in their place and I've come, I've, I've, I've come to you to tell you and to give them to you. Now the truth is they could have come off a shelf where they're all part of a, some piece of equipment and uh, now they won't be able to put that piece of equipment together. And I looked at her and, and, and uh, initially I could have got a bit concerned or annoyed even, and something in my heart broke and it was like, she really thinks she's being helpful. How beautiful is this? And for some reason, uh, what came to mind was the scripture that we often hear at weddings, which is about love. Here's a little girl helping me in some ways, she could be, you know, making things more difficult for people, moving things that shouldn't be moved. And because she's my granddaughter, she gets to go to places maybe where other kids don't get to go to in some ways, or think she can. And so here she is doing this and she thinks she's helping. And, and I just smiled at her and I went, you know, when Jesus said, you know, come to me all you little children and we, ad we adults need to come like a child, there was just an innocence in her that she was thinking that she thought she was helping. And, and it reminded me of that scripture that we have, we often hear at weddings, the, the passage of scripture about love. And, and love is such a deep quality. And we can think about love between, you know, parent to child, parent to grandchild and between people. But there's a different kind of love that the scriptures talk about. That is a quality that we possess a quality that we possess rather than an emotion that we have. And it says this, If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I might boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not rude, envious or boastful, or arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Paul, when writing to the Corinthians, is saying something to them about the quality of the person they are called to be. Look at it again. If I speak in the tongues of mortals, if I can speak with wisdom and, and, and of angels, but don't have love, I'm just a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. I don't, it doesn't matter. If I have prophetic powers, as in the ability to understand God's calling and, God, and the future, and understand all mysteries, the mysteries of God, which are so exceptional, and all knowledge. And if I have all faith, think about that, if I have all the faith as to remove mountains, which is what Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say this mountain, get up and throw yourself into the sea. But do not have love, I am nothing, Paul writes. If I give away all my possessions, which is the story of the rich young ruler, give away your possessions, come follow me. 
And if I hand over my body so that I may boast, the story of the martyrs, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So, so love trumps all of these actions that we engage in. L love trumps these, these, these uh, qualities that we have. The giving up of our possessions, the even laying down of our life and being killed. But if we haven't got love, we've got nothing. For love is patient when they give you a whole pile of stuff in your hands and you then think to yourself, this is not good. Love is kind, it, love is envious, is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things and endures all things. What I've come to understand about love is that love is a quality within us. It is a quality that we possess where we are able to, it, it is about the golden rule, put love others as you s seek to be loved yourself. To love is to lay down one's life. And we're called to do that, not just to ourselves, but to others as well. And so I want to encourage you in your prayer today, take that passage of scripture and ask yourself the question, how am I living this in my own life? And uh, it, it's a very confronting scripture. Sadly, a scripture that we hear very often, uh, but yet the problem is, is that when you hear something very, very often, sometimes you can become familiar. And we miss the power of what Paul is saying about this gift that we're meant to possess. Loving Father, we thank you that you love us. Lord, may we be people of love. Lord God, because we know that love is maturity. We know that love is decision. And we know that love is hard. Help us, Lord God, because sometimes we mistake it for that chemistry love that there is. But love is a decision that takes us to a deeper place spiritually and causes us to encounter you more. And Father, we make this prayer in Jesus' name through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. Take that to prayer. There's a lot in that. Um, and what do I normally say now? And God is never far from you. See you, bye.